Okay. Welcome back, everybody, to Space Engineer's Beginner's Guide. This is, well, episode 7. Now, I thought we'd do something a little bit different uh, from this episode forward. Uh, up until this point, the last... Sorry, episode 6. Did I say episode 7? Why did I say that? Anyway, for the last five episodes, I've gone very rapidly through the basics of movement and the different features in Space Engineers and um, various things you can do. And I know yesterday I mentioned that uh, we'll do a bit more when it comes to conveyors. And I figured what better way to actually really understand how everything all works together in the Space Engineers game than to actually do it in an actual game or at least in a survival environment, something that requires you to to go through all the routines that I've been saying, mining product, refining it, using an assembler to turn it into usable components, and using those components to build things up. Now to get us started with that, I've set up a, a very basic platform. This is the exact same uh, scenario that we were using last time. I've actually just cleared the, the, the quick built base and, and the demonstration models um, off the ice lake here, and I've put a nice flat platform. Uh, I've given it power. I've put a stuck cargo container here, just a small one as you can see, and it even lists what the purpose of this is. Uh, the contents in there are to give us, very rapidly we can build one refinery, one assembler, and up to 10 conveyor tubes just to pipe them up. Um, we already have a cargo container here, it's just a small one, if we wish one. Uh, you wish to use one, we don't have to, we can just use the inbuilt inventories for the refinery and assemblers at this stage. Um, until we can generate enough uh, additional components to be able to build um, a larger cargo container or another refinery or assembler or whatever we want to do with it. Now something I haven't touched on previous to this but I have included with this map is a medical bay. Now a medical bay is rather useful. Um, for example, if you get injured, which can happen, you can be drilling away and a rock comes off the or an ice piece shard breaks off and rapidly hits you, you might find that it damages you and takes some of your health away. Well, whilst there is a setting that I've actually got set that allows you to slowly heal, you can come to a medical bay and you can activate, press F on our screen here, and you can tell by the sound, nice little palsy sound, it will recharge our health, or let us still heal us, if we have an oxygen generator or oxygen supply attached to it through its either connector at the top or down the bottom here, it will restock all of our oxygen in our suit. Uh, it will recharge our energy if we uh, based off you know, draws energy from our power source, whether it be batteries, reactors, and it will recharge our suit. And likewise, if we plugged into an oxygen slash generator network, or oxygen generator, uh, it will generally will restock our hydrogen as well because that comes from producing oxygen from ice will also generate hydrogen. So our four elements down the bottom left of our display are the green, blue, yellow and orange. A medical bay will actually fully uh, restock all of those. But the other useful thing about that is if you die about a medical bay. If you die that gives you a place you can respawn to. Um, now prior to me putting this in if we had it died in this particular environment, the only option it would have given us would be to respawn in our spacesuit. And I believe it would have put us back where we actually started, which is some way over the mountain somewhere. This way it will actually give us the option to respawn at this medical bay here. And we can come straight back here and continue. And we can even demonstrate that. Um, Believe me, I'm not a huge fan of using this this uh, keyboard command. But if you find yourself in a tough situation or you, you're stuck and you need to reset your character, you can suicide is, is the actual term for it. You can press the backspace on your keyboard and it gives you the option to yes or no. We say yes and instantly we die. And when we say respawn, you notice now it comes up and says medical rooms. Well, you can see one, it's owned by us. 
So do we want to respawn there or any of these other things? Well, we want the medical bay, so we'll respawn at the medical bay. And there we are. We're right back here. And we can be anywhere in this entire solar system. And we can tell it to respawn us back here when we suicide. And we'll come straight back here. Now, there's our now defunct self. We'll just take all of the things off him, including the hydrogen bottle. He will actually vanish shortly, I hope. Yes, there we go. Now, the other thing I included on this particular map is rather than going and hunting for all the resources, like I showed you in our previous episodes, I have created a resource wall. This has got every resource bar one. Uh, we've got plenty of ice here. The base is actually stone. We've got every other usable ore that you can find in the game except for one, which is not normally found on planets, so therefore I was not going to place it down here. I'll leave that up to the user to find uh, once they actually get in and play the game and explore out there into space. But starting from the left over here, we have a little sliver of uranium, followed by a large deposit of iron ore. And this is also so you can help to recognise them. So yes, we've got uranium ore. Oh, the sun is not helping. Um, iron ore, nickel, cobalt. Uh, then I believe we have got magnesium, which is useful for um, armaments, uh, weapons, or well, ammunition, and so on. Then we've got silicon, silver, and gold. Now they are all used to some degree um, in the production of components. And as you can see, they do actually look, in the sun, they do look rather impressive. I think they've done a very nice job with the, the materials here. So rather than having to go hunting for these things, I've made them nice and convenient here so we can get straight into actually building a, a refining base and learning or playing with and learning how to uh, use conveyors and as we discussed in the last episode conveyor sorters, uh, collectors and so on that if we decide to use the collectors. Now on a side note um, something that was drawn to brought to my attention by uh, one of our viewers in the last episode, uh, Assenberger. Um, my description of utilising ships to do mining was a little ambiguous in uh, in some areas. Um, I mentioned how with the hand drill, if you left click, it will generate usable resource nodes that you can pick up. If you right click, it clears material and doesn't generate anything. And uh, I was a little bit unclear about uh, that same functionality within ships that have got drills attached to them. Now, as he rightfully pointed out, and reminded me, yes, those uh, ship-based drills do have those same functionalities. Left click for drilling, right click for clearing. Uh, you need to actually add the, um, the drills onto your toolbar as an actual tool, as opposed to just a turn on off. If you just turn it on or off, then the drill will drill and generate resource. That's the only function that on off will do. But if you do select it as a tool and place it as a tool, which binds it to your left and right mouse button, just like this drill, then yes, you can left click on a, a ship based drill and it will do drilling and generate resources that you can pick up, or that automatically pick up, or you can right click and it will generate a drilling function that will just literally clear the area and not generate any resources. So I just thought I'd make that perfectly clear that. The, the hand drill and these ship drills do contain the same functionality when they are set up as a mouse mouse based um, left right mouse button tool on your toolbar as opposed to just uh, uh, the ability to press a button and to turn it on press a button again and turn it off now that said let's get to and actually start building something now we've got enough resources here to build a refinery and an assembler so I think we shall actually do that first before we try and mine, or before we go and mine any of those resources that I've provided. We'll actually build a refinery so that we can actually refine them. 
don't need the assembler straight away. I um, only need that once we want to start producing or creating other items. But for now, we need a refinery. So let's press G to bring up our toolbar config, find our refineries. There it is. Now we can just left click and drag onto the menu. Right clicking will actually clear it from your toolbar. Or as I mentioned, you can literally just double click it up at the top here and it will assign it to the next available empty slot. Um, for example, if I was to do that, um, I can now double click it and it will actually put it into slot 3, which is where we had our character tool, our, our, our drill, which we need. get rid of those and just put them around the other way. I like to keep all of my tools together and then all of my objects for building together as well or separate. So that's what we need. So what do we actually need to do this? Well we need a lot of steel. We need initially we need 1100 steel plates with a further 100 steel plates to finish to, to finish it off at the end. But we'll start with the basic steel plates. So let's jump in here. Now recall double clicking a resource will transfer that resource between inventories now in this case we have limited capacity for inventory Ooh, in fact we have got we're actually even more limited at the moment we just clear these items they came off our corpse that's better so we'll just double click the steel and it gave us 1270 which is actually more than what we need now if we have a look again, 1,100 for the basic build, plus an additional 100 to finish off. So 1,200, we've got just above that. So that is perfect. And now we need to put it somewhere. So we're going to just move over this side here, just away from what we've got there. Okay, now you notice it automatically snapped to a position. We can change that. In fact, I'll just turn them on so you can see what they are again. Um, display, no, not display, what was it? Um, okay, we'll turn those on. There we go. So, we, as we can see, if we want to turn it, say, counterclockwise, it'd be a page up and insert, I think, by the looks of that. Uh, page up and insert, so, yes. Now, this stage we're not going to worry about upgrades so in that case I'm going to press end bring it down onto its face and then we'll do uh, we need to rotate it so it's deleting page down so we're going to actually block oh, I did it again. we're going to block those upgrade ports uh, only because at this point in time we're not going to worry about them so I don't think we need them um, is that Unfortunately, because this item is so big, it's very difficult to actually see exactly where it's being placed sometimes. But I think that looks pretty darn nice. So we'll put it there. And if you notice, it's just put a framework. Basically, it's like a, a, the builder has now set up the framework. We need to now build that up. Now, change over to our um, building tool. And we start building. As you notice straight away, it's assigned all the relevant steel plates because we had them on us. It's assigned all of this construction that Neil needs, all 1,200 of them. Then we'll continue building that up until, as you can see, it now tells us what we need. We need 40 construction components. So, just quickly scoot back over here. We need 40 construction components. We're finished with those now, so I'll just double click them and put them back into our main resource. And in this case, I'm going to right click and drag that into my inventory and it literally just select the 40 I need. Okay. Now, whilst I'm doing this, if you take note of my um, heads up display down the bottom left hand side of the screen there, you notice that some of our settings there, some of our values going down, our energy is going down, 
and our oxygen is going down. Now, you might say to you, you know, think to yourself, well, we're on a planet, isn't there enough oxygen here? And yes, there is. We can see that quite clearly. If you have a look, to find a dark spot, there we go. Uh, look at our toolbar in the center of the screen. It's, it says the welder, and then we've got our different tools and uh, underneath that. And if you look down, right near the bottom of the screen, just to the right of center, it says O2 high in green letters. And that lets you know that you're actually in a very high oxygen environment. So why is our O2 in our display going down? In fact, it just went down again. Take a closer look to our heads-up display on the left-hand side there and you'll see a picture of our helmet and you'll notice under the, under the letter J and you'll notice that the visor is down. It's a fully enclosed helmet. We are currently fully enclosed and using our suit-based oxygen. And we can even see that by going into third person by pressing V, pressing our Alt key down, scrolling our mouse to zoom in a bit, and if we come around here, we can see our visor is actually down. So we're not actually breathing the air, we are breathing canned air in the suit air. So we'll press J on our keyboard and open our visor up, and that will actually stop us using our suit oxygen. And rather than leaving that value down like that, let's just come back and make use of our medical bay. This is a perfect example of what I was explaining before. We come up to the terminal, press F to activate it, and you notice it instantly jumps straight back to 100. And our energy has gone back up as well. Now the reason our energy is going down is because all of our tools, our welder, our grinder, and our drill, are powered by this, the energy power uh, in our suit. Um, so you can, you can work away, you can be mining, work away, work away, you know, lights on, and then all of a sudden your lights will go out and your drill will stop working. The reason for that is because you've run out of energy. Now, I wasn't paying attention and rambling myself and didn't pay attention and make note of what our next component was. Large steel tubes and we need 20 of them. Now fortunately when you do run out of energy in your suit, it doesn't actually stop you being able to use your jetpack on a planet. The only thing that stops you using a jetpack is a lack of hydrogen. Fortunately, we have got hydrogen. As if you have a look at our display, we are fully stocked with hydrogen because we're not using our jetpack at all. And also above where it says H2 in the orange bar there, there's this tiny little picture of a bottle. And that is because we actually have got an a hydrogen bottle with us, so it's a backup hydrogen. We'll use our suit, and then the suit will get recharged from that hydrogen bottle, and we can do that several times until the hydrogen bottle actually runs out. Now, when that happens, you can come, in fact, let's have a look. And yes, we can see we've already used some of it. Now, we can actually recharge that. We can fill that hydrogen bottle back up, and that's simply by putting it back into the oxygen generator. Plot into the cargo, even if we had connectors connecting our oxygen generator with our cargo, we can't just put the, the hydrogen bottle, or our oxygen bottles for that matter, into the cargo container. They do not get recharged and refilled. They have to go into the oxygen generator itself. So if we put this into here, you notice instantly it's jumped up to 100% again. And you may have also noted that a little bit of our ice de depleted. So it used a little bit of the ice to recharge the bottle. Okay, now put that back in there, put that back in there, and I think we need some motors, I didn't pay attention once again, and computers and displays. We'll do it all at once, I hope. Motors and computers don't need the displays, look at that. And we need more motors and more computers, so six more motors and 10 more computers. Okay. Six more motors. And 10 more computers. Now you may notice it's actually getting dark. You can see the shadows moving across over there as the sun is going down. And this is a good time. We can turn our suit lights on. So you press L for light and instantly we've got 
dual little spotlights as you can see that illuminate our work face right in front of us so wherever we are wherever we're facing it will now be illuminated okay, so let's finish this off and there we are we have now a working refinery we've got nothing to put in it yet but it's now fully built so that said let's start going and getting some ore and we'll get it processing now the main ore as i've mentioned the main ore that we'll need is going to be our iron ore here so let's just jump this over here in fact i'm going to start from the top so we'll just jetpack right to the top here we go and i'm just going to use the left hand mouse button and it's going to throw all pieces everywhere slippery some of these wall pieces will travel quite a ways if they get a bit of a bounce on them or if they ricochet off something um, I would not be surprised to find some way over there at some stage there's a piece of nickel we just picked up there as well that's quite helpful not that we need it right this moment but hey it's all want to refine it and use it. Now, if you recall, as I mentioned, okay, we've got some ice, cool. Um, this is actually all set on a bed of stone, so we do even have some stone without having to go way over there somewhere. Just for the sake, we don't need a lot of stone, but we will need some eventually. stone at least but I believe the other resources as well that I've set on this wall here they do extend a couple of meters down into the ice as you can see under the, under the ice down here so it should be enough resources here to keep us going and build quite a substantial base if we want to inventory full and look at that that even tells us inventory full inventory full oh no we be too full to jump up there Alright, that's our first load of ore, I think we've even got some ice, but, and some nickel. So that can go there, and that can go there. And when it's finished doing the, oh, the iron ore here, it will then move on to the nickel. We can actually swap them around at any time, we'll say, oh, we've got tons of iron, let's do the nickel. So literally just click and drag it in front, and now you notice it's actually refining the nickel, when it's finished that'll go back to the, ore, to the iron ore. Just like that. Now we do have a little bit of ice as well, so we'll just toss that in our oxygen generator here just to uh, make up for that little bit of ice that we used just before. And let's go and get some more resources. using my jetpack here yeah, we'll take you um, and if you have a look at our heads up display on the left hand side there our orange bar is down to 59 percent so just need to be mindful of that although like i said i'm carrying a, a hydrogen bottle so once it actually depletes that bar it will top itself back up and it will do that several times over until the oxygen bottle itself is depleted, oh, sorry, hydrogen bottle itself is depleted. Okay, stone. Yes, okay, that's fine. 
So as long as you can still see that little picture of a bottle there, little icon of a bottle above the H2 bar, you know you've got plenty of hydrogen, it's not going to just run out on you uh, and leave you in the lurch, like up in the air, dangling, or falling more precisely. Once that those bottles uh, are depleted, um, for example, I'll even show you here, let's grab another bottle, and you'll notice now our, we see two little icons. So it actually will show you three icons. If you've got more than three bottles, it will put a little plus sign next to the third one to say you've got three plus. So as long as you can see, as long as you can see um, a picture of a bottle above your, your hydrogen bar there, you know you've got plenty of hydrogen. Once all those bottles are depleted, they actually no longer display. But they only displays hydrogen bottles that have got hydrogen in them. Once they are empty, they will no longer display on that bar there. So if that bar is all of a sudden empty of little hydrogen icons, then you know you need to be very careful of using your jetpack because you've got no additional supply of hydrogen there to keep you aloft if you actually deplete your suit reserves. <coughs> to stop collecting resources there. I think we've got a nice basic amount of iron to get ourselves going. And I better not do that too often. And it's a bit more stone there. You'll notice the stone gets turned into gravel. Um, useful to have. It's very important when it comes to generating uh, reactor components for building nuclear reactors. That is the only use that I'm aware of for gravel, um, so you don't need a lot of it. Not that much anyway. Um, you find way more stone than you actually do need to use. Iron is the one that you use the most of. Um, even in interior plates, for example, they make use of iron. In fact, looking at our list of in our cargo here, we can see that uses iron ore, 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 uses iron ore exclusively. Um, they don't need any additional ores or resources to actually make those items. It's simply iron, so you do make use of a lot of iron ore. So it's good to have a lot of it. I think they should keep us going for a while. Now we need to build an assembler. Excuse me. <coughs> so let's build an assembler and that way we can start producing more of those items. Okay, now I'm not 100% sure exactly what items we need for our assembler. So let's have a look. We go into our G config menu, find our assembler. There we go, and it does actually tell you when you run your mouse over it, but unless you're going to write it down on a piece of paper, I find it's actually easier to put it into your menu, into your toolbar, sorry, and then select it. And you notice it shows up on the right hand side there exactly the list of components that are required to actually build it. So, in a lot of cases, I'll actually then come over here. I'll say, okay, I need 130 plus 20 steel, so I need 150 steel. Let's just grab 150 steel. And then we look at this and go 40 construction components. That's 40 more of those. And 8 motors. And 4 displays. Oh, that's where our displays go. Displays and finally 80 computers. Okay, computers, eight, oh, that's all we've got. So there we go. And now you'll notice our assembler is green, so it says yes, you can place it. If it comes up red like that anytime when you're plugging, putting it against something, it means that you either cannot place it there or you don't have the relevant materials. If you don't have the materials and you try and place it, it will actually tell you you need. In this case, you need steel plate. However, we've got it coming up green. And what I'm going to do, 
since we've been making use of, so far we've been making use of that port there to interface with our refinery, I am actually going to put our assembler like that, because we do have that big port on the side. I'm going to put it against the side of the refinery like that, port to port, so we don't need any conveyors whatsoever. We can actually have one talk directly to the other. Okay. And we'll also still have access, or it will give us access I should say, to the large port on the front of the assembly here. Look at that nice robotic, robotic arms that are going to start doing our building for us. Okay, we'll just clean this up. There we go. Now you notice we've got a nice big nice big conveyor port that we can access our refinery through there but also we've got another nice big port that we can access our assembler here now if we go into production it shows nothing now that's a good point let me check this oh now you notice it now says one still plate in our assembler but it still says that we don't have the materials. Now the truth is we do have the materials. The assembler is pulling those root materials directly out of the refinery. But for some reason it's not wanting to show us in production that it's what it can, that's what it can build. If we had it connected to a cargo container as you saw then uh, previously, then it will actually show us what it can build based on the connected cargo uh, container. But in this case I'm going to build 2000. Oh, there we go, now it shows us. You can actually now see what's in the refinery. So we can actually see, hey, I've got the materials to build these items. These all make use of iron ingots. And you can see the stored items here. At the moment, because it's doing work, it shows us what it's using, how much is required, and how much is available. Now this keeps changing, the available keeps changing because it keeps pulling the relevant amount out of the refinery as is required. So it needs three and a half thousand iron ingots. Now we can check here and we've actually got eleven, nearly eleven and a half thousand. So we've definitely got plenty of iron ingots. But if you run your mouse over top of the items on this side where it says blueprints, it actually shows you, pops up and shows you in stored materials what materials are required to build that item. As you can see, that is iron ingots. Iron ingots, iron ingots. They only need iron ingots. If we look at reactor components, as you can see, it needs gravel. Now, there's many different ways of using an assembler. This is the basic, this is just building individual components. We can go into tools and we can build upgraded tools which are more efficient, work better and faster. We can create more oxygen and hydrogen bottles so that we can have more on hand. We can create more weapons depending on the scenario you're playing. But we've also got these other two icons here, large blocks and small blocks. If it's going to large blocks and you notice these look remarkably familiar. That's because these are the same blocks that you see in your toolbar config menu. Now, the way this works is if you select one of these, for example a wheel, you select one of these to assemble or produce, it will pull in all the relevant materials and build all the relevant components to build that one item or however many of them there are. So rather than you, like, if we have a look here, we can even find, where is it, there we go, oxygen generator, oxygen tanks, finally. Now you saw all the resources that we actually used to build that before. If I was to, if I had the resource of course, if I was to tell it to build or assemble one of those items, it actually would generate the 1,200 steel plates, it would generate all the construction components, everything necessary to build one refinery, if I told it to generate or assemble one refinery. 
So when the time comes, rather than just generating steel plates like this, when I've got the resources to be able to make all of the required items, I can just click one on that and it will then put them all into our assembly inventory. Now at the moment we've got no piping anywhere so we can't actually take these plates anywhere and we are nearly two thirds of our capacity. So we're going to have to see about piping this up. So we can send those materials somewhere for storage. Now, it's a long way to go over here. And that has got a much bigger capacity. 10,000 litres. That must be why they use litres, as opposed to 156,000 litres. Now, we could just... Yeah, well, we could actually just come over here them up, or as many as we can get off them, and run them over here, and we could convey them manually. Rather tedious, and I don't know about you, but I don't fancy, fancy having to do that for every resource, or every component we build. So, next episode, we will actually see about putting in some basic conveyors to pull components from our assembler and send it over there to our container. Resources, I'm going to just leave them here. It's got a reasonably good capacity, as you can see. We've still got over 8,000 iron ingots, and we're only using 1,000 litres capacity out of a 75,000 litre capacity item. So, a lot of space there that we can put ingots in. So, we don't need to worry about that one at this stage. So, next episode, we will set up a conveyor sorter and conveyor. I'll probably tap it off maybe off the back here. Yeah, probably run it off the back. Then we'll run it right the way along the back here up to our cargo container and we'll set it up with a, a drain on a conveyor sorter so it will literally will pull all the constructed materials out of there, the components and shuffle them over there. So for now we'll stop there on this episode um, and uh, we'll pick this up on the next episode of Space Engineers Beginner's Guides as we learn a bit more about how to construct a base and construct components in a survival environment. So thank you for watching and I shall see you next time.